time to go big or go home. MX1, Moto1. Okay, Galdi, let's get into that first MX1 Moto. Um, obviously, we know that the uh, the Moto was red flag, so we'll get into that in a second, but uh, right out of the gate, Dusty Klatt got a dynamite hole shot and took the lead, and it looked like, to me, uh, based on where Fasciati was, that it might be quite a while before Fasciati got up into second and battled with him, but uh, I like uh, Klatt off the start there. Yeah, we were uh, we got a great shot of him, kind of pushing Colton wide, because it looked like Colton was going to try to still stick him around the outside of that first turn, and Dusty kind of just pushed him, uh, pushed him out and claimed that 200 bucks for Royal Distributing, and uh, yeah, like you said, actually Colt was about seven, actually, when he came around, and then all of a sudden, he just picked the guys off and got into second on about the third lap, and uh, Dusty probably had Oh, maybe two, three seconds on him, and uh, he closed right in on a lap and a half, and then they made the pass, and it looked like Klein almost was ready for it. He kind of almost knew it was coming because he didn't really put up much of a fight. Um, then he hung in there, he hung tight, he stayed within about five seconds, and it uh, looked like Klein of old was showing up and everything, and he you know put that demon that happened last weekend behind him. And then uh, around the 21 minute mark we got from one of our officials, the uh, the red flag came out, and uh, all of a sudden number one was gone, and number two was now in number one position. Yeah, and unfortunately we didn't get a shot of it because you guys were in the uh, were in the Shaw Valley in that back section, but uh, Colton Fasciati coming through the rhythm section leading up to the 110 foot jump swapped out and uh, full endo package bike landing on top of him. Uh, the reported right now is that he's going to be fine. I think he was uh, certainly lucid when he left. Uh, they're just taking you know extra precautions, of course, taking him to the hospital. Let's get back into uh, into the race. Um, I write I like a couple of battles that I saw, and how about that crash from uh, Josh Adams? That was, or, saying Josh Troy Troy Adams Jeez, Troy Josh. Adams yeah. <laughs> that's all right they're, they're tough to figure out those guys but uh, big crash yeah right in front of us uh, coming out of where the old whoop section was just uh, in the big sweeper endo over the bars went down real hard and actually Liam O'Fair clipped him and went down and went down as well as, as he was going by but uh, after that there were really good battles going on with Freddie Carley Mason Phillips and Josh Demuth really going out of there with Josh moving ahead and able to take that third position for the podium. Bobby Kinnire all by himself in second spot, didn't have a challenge on the whole entire race. And then behind them you had Nemeth, Keast, and uh, there's another rider in there that uh, Urquhart was in yeah. there for a while. Buying. And so a lot of stuff going on and then all of a sudden we had the red flag come in and Kansas Moto because it looked like there was going to be a really good end for that battle of, for the fourth place uh, just off the box. But the, the top three guys were set. Bobby really quiet but uh, second again he's, and uh, you know what that just put him in the lead of, uh, for the points right there, so uh, big mix up in that moment. Yeah, I mean, it's not the way to take it. It was a really bad crash, cold hat, and uh, you know, I hope he's all right. But uh, my Yamaha Red Bull Blackfoot bike got off to an awesome start. We were able to grab the whole shot and uh, led a few laps, and it was it was a good race. I was actually probably the best I felt so far this season. And uh, you know, Cole got in front of me, and I just tried finding a couple lines that I think some of mine weren't working too well. But uh, now once I got in that groove, I was able to you know stay more with him anyway. So, but uh, until his incident, it was kind of crappy way to go. Yeah, it's definitely, it's a, it's a little bit tough, you know, the track's real rutted and uh, the corners especially, I mean, they're like knee deep ruts everywhere, so, you know, when you go to make a pass, you really got to be aggressive with it, and uh, I was just, I, I don't know, you know, the more I ride, the more I'm up here, you know, my Serenix Kawasaki, you know, Pro Circuit uh, Monster, it's it's like uh, the bike, I get used to it more and more every time I race, and uh, I'm getting used to going fast again, it's been a while, you know. I'm Cam Brownson, host of Angler and Hunter Television. On the way to the blind, it's on my Yamaha. I'm Dave Mercer, host of the Fax Efficient, and this is my Yamaha. I'm Jim Rogers, BP VMAX Owners Association, and this is my Yamaha. What kind of Yamaha are you? MX Performance, Canada's motocross magazine. MXP is loaded with page after page of spectacular photos and in-depth coverage of the world of motocross, both on and off the track. Whether it's at the races or behind the scenes, MXP captures the pulse of the most exciting sport on the planet. So don't be left in the roost. Subscribe now to MX Performance Magazine, Canada's number one motocross publication. It's time for the Tiddlers, MX2, Moto2. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, Goldie, second MX2 moto is in the books here in Calgary, and I would say that was the wildest moto that we've had so far this season, strictly based on what was happening up front. Yeah, it just seemed like no one wanted to win that thing. We get Rife out front, starting to pull away, actually looking really good about three laps, and then all of a sudden he disappears. Teddy Mayer takes over. Uh, one thing I didn't touch, those C4 MX motors, obviously, up in front again. Those guys are banging motors out, whole shots out on the leading edge bikes. And then all of a sudden, uh, Teddy Mayer, so he's leading. Then Medallion makes the pass. He tips over. Teddy's back up front. Then all of a sudden, Teddy goes down. Medallion's back up front. So it was a, probably the best one we've had so far as far as uh, just some drama going out there. Yeah, you made a good point about uh, the leading edge Kawasaki. Six hole shots in a row. They're the only uh, squad that's hole shot in this season. Um, but then, you know, falling backwards, there wasn't a lot of great battles. It looked like a lot of the guys that are in uh, sort of title contention or podium contention just kind of found their way through. And of course, Jeremy Dagley, who seems to find himself third place in the second MX2 moto just in about every single race, finished third. Yeah, his, his second moto was definitely his gravy moto there. And he got uh, a little uh, lucky uh, towards the end, too, with Teddy going down. He was all over him, but he totally totally on the podium. There's just like not many opportunities to pass, so he wasn't able to stick it in there. But uh, and then the Eric Nye, another quiet moto, just kind of by himself. Uh, Kieran Fitzgerald had a very good moto that time. Finally, we got to see the stuff that we saw at the end of last year. Uh, and we know he's dealing with a, a sore knee, but uh, he fought hard, really good. That moto ended up fifth. But behind him, there was a great battle going on with Kevin Benoit, Sean Rife after he got back up. Um, the Allison brothers was in there, Dylan Kalen and uh, Spencer Knowles. It was great. They were just a, a train, but uh, just a lack of line option right there in the second moto, it seems. Well, there wasn't a lot of passing, but. Uh, uh, Tyler Medallia, the man of the hour, once again goes 2-1 for the overall and uh, solidifies that points lead just a little bit more. It was a really good race. It was fun, you know. I, uh, the track was really good. It was nice, uh, nice and ruddy, and you know, I just took my time and and uh, you know, gained, gained, and then uh, you know, I made a little bit of a mistake, but then I capitalized on his, so it was good. Teddy Mayer goes down there, gives you a little opportunity, but it looked like there wasn't many places to pass. It was like the fast line was just that main one. Did you just not have nothing to get to go for it on the outside to get by me on that last lap? Uh, there was like there's a couple sections that it's literally like I'm not joking when I say one line. It was one line for like 15 feet, so. Uh, I don't know. It was a. Uh, he went down. I tried to push there. It was. Uh, I did what I could, and he uh, stayed in front. So it was good on him. But uh, I'll try a little harder next week. When the trail beckons, the gate drops, or the open road awaits, will you be ready? Royal Distributing, Canada's power sports leader, has you covered. Go online and browse. Then order parts, accessories, and clothing online, by phone, or in one of our three retail outlets. Huge selection, easy ordering, fast shipping coast to coast. Get the whole shot with Royal Distributing, Canada's power sports leader.